This is the All-American Ron Simmons, and you're listening to Casio's Cut. Damn! What's up, candy lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing? You listening to another edition of Casio's Cut. Hey, kid, look at me. Let's burn down the school with gasoline. Say, hey. Welcome back here at episode 29, Casio's Cut. We appreciate you rejoining us and hanging on for the ride. It is Casio's Cup Podcast. I truly, truly thank every one of you that have listened and gave us a shot. And if you're brand new, buckle up, sit in, hang out, get your snacks out. It's going to be a fun ride with us. We're having fun all in this together. Very funny guest today, Mo Alexander. Can't wait for you to experience all that is Mo. But first, a little housekeeping. Of course, social media. We interact with you. We want you to interact with us at Casio's Cut. C-A-S-I-O-S-C-U-T. At Casio's Cut. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. All the same. At Casio's Cut. Of course, Casio'sCut.com is where you can download the podcast. Uh, if you would like it for anything and also catch up on all past episodes as well. And if you're listening on another platform besides the website, Apple podcasts, Spotify, anything else, please do us a favor. The biggest thing you can do for the podcast is subscribe. And if there's a rating system, please rate it accordingly, which of course is max. Okay. Next, of course, we've got our merchandise store, the official merchandise headquarters for the podcast, Casio's Cuts, with an S on the end, Casio'sCuts.com. That's Merchandise HQ, and we just dropped our new logo yesterday. Go take a poop with your pants on. That is out and available, brand new logo for everybody to enjoy at Casio'sCuts.com. And yes, there will be a Black Friday sale. Boom! That's how we roll. Also coming up on a brand new episode of What's in Casio's Box, we encourage you to send anything you want to our P.O. Box. It is that simple, and some of these have turned out to be some of the most fun we've had doing the podcast. I've heard from you guys that you're really enjoying the, the P.O. Box episodes. So if you want to be a part of it, all you got to do is mail whatever you want. Love letters, hate mail, gifts, funny things, food, whatever it is. If you can put it in a container and it gets to my box, I'll open it live on a YouTube video and episode here on the podcast. Casio's Cut, P.O. Box 19065. Huntsville, Alabama, 35804. That's Casio's Cut, P.O. Box 19065, Huntsville, Alabama, 35804. And now for the man of the hour, very funny stand-up comedian, Mo Alexander. He's from Memphis. Uh, He has been on Kevin Hart, Heart of the City. You can check that out for the Memphis episode. Very funny guy. We first worked together uh, going on probably 20 years now. Uh, and uh, I got a chance to catch up with my man, Mo Alexander. So if you hear some background noise, we're at the, we're at the green room of the comedy club start home in Birmingham, Alabama. Indeed. Mo Alexander is about to go up and headline the world famous star dome in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> when's, the, when's the first time you you worked at the star dome? Oh, I, I don't even know. It was back in the day because Larry the Cable Guy tried to get me fired. <laughs> what? Because I why? why? Because seriously. Well, first of all, you're nothing alike. No, so. no, that was that was the cool part. The shows were not crossing over at right. all. And then so, but I, the problem was the Tuesday Wednesday show. I got a standing ovation before he did. Oh no! So he tried to get somebody to fire me here, but they wouldn't do it because I wasn't doing anything wrong. <laughs> so by the end of the weekend, I was the end of the week. I was doing ten minutes. 
And you want 10 minutes of Mo Alexander, I'm still giving you the best of. That's back in the day. It was like maybe 20 years ago. You're throwing back. haymakers in 10 exactly. minutes. Exactly. Like 10 minutes, really? Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Save up. All right, leave. <laughs> Save up. <laughs> That's just a comic in joke right there, folks. That's just for comics. Uh, <laughs> Save up and then leave. All right, we got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover. This is going, uh, me and Mo go way back. Yeah, man. I don't remember what year it was. Probably, I know it's early 2000s. Early 2000s. Or we late, did, late 99. And we did um, Howl at the Moon. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's one of my first time I ever did Howl at the Moon. And if anybody's never done comedy there, uh, you basically break up the dueling piano show. Yeah, they were mad about it, too. They are they They're hate the awful. Comedy. They're yeah. horrible. They're Even though it's every time. It's every it, week. They, it's been going on for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. They should know it's going to happen every they week. They still are like, we're going to do comedy after this song. They're like, really? Again? Yeah, again, yeah. <laughs> I no, thought man. we booed them last time. Yeah, no. Ugh, they're horrible. <laughs> but they, if you can get them, they're a super fun crowd. Oh, that, that crowd, if you can get them there, they're one of the best crowds you ever see. But if you can't get them, all they're going to do is send you tequila shots. <laughs> my, I got my record of tequila shots at that place. I, uh, <laughs> it was 19 double shots of tequila. <laughs> they were just lined up on the piano, and the guy hated me. Like, you got to get your shots off. <laughs> and I just walked off stage flipping them off. Go to hell. I'm not doing shit. Walked to the, walked to the, to the back room, got paid. Walked to my car, sat in my car for two hours so I could sober up enough <laughs> to drive 30 feet down the road because I'm not going to jail in Florida. So we're at Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> I've never met Mo. I only know his reputation, of course. He's headlining. I'm featured. I'm so excited to be at this club at the first time. You were so scared, too. And because like, yeah, because I'm seeing dueling you're pianos, and everybody's going, that crowd is going to eat you alive if they don't like you. Yeah. And so I go up. I get one shot. They're not loving it. And I do about a tight seven out of 25 I'm mm -hmm, supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I start, I start doing Mo's intro, and he is in the, you're in the very back, and you're I'm like, back wait, he's not doing my intro, because he I'm, just got up there. I'm in the back. This one girl, this one waitress is actually hitting on me, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> well, what you, what, what's the fun tonight to show you? Let's get a drink real quick. And then, and now next coming to Mo, I'm like 100 <laughs> feet away with 3,000 people having yeah. to fight my fat ass through a crowd. <laughs> yeah, it's packed. Trying to get there. Like, excuse me, excuse me. All fart, the tables me, are together. Excuse me, <laughs> No old white women. It was oh my god, I was so mad. I'm looking at you like you motherfucker. I couldn't believe you did not do we your never, time tonight. He, you get on stage, you go, what happened? And we just in the passing, I went, I fucked you. And I, I just, <laughs> that's I just, how we do. You people I just walked off stage. You just walked out right past because you couldn't even. It couldn't even walk on the sub side of stage because no. the two of the, the pianos were so tight. You just you could like barely crawl. It was, you like on a mountain pass, and yeah. only one person had passed at a time. <laughs> like, and some... me and him are two big ass. So I'm about to my ass is in the face of somebody <laughs> as I'm walking through passing. Him. What happened? I fucked you. Sorry. And I'm just like, you motherfucker. <laughs> and that's why I walked to the stage. As soon as I got there, the first two shots showed up. Like, oh, I was going to be one of these. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. You motherfuckers think I'm scared of you people. I ain't playing. Let's I got go. through and I said, buddy, I owe you a lot of shots because I fucked you royally. <laughs> I ended up doing like an hour and a half that night. Oh, yeah. You were yeah. here because we had to fill time. We had to fill time. I, I left you hanging. I wasn't gonna get, I'm not going <laughs> to end the show early. I'm like, hell, Mo's only doing an hour and a half tonight. That's a, that's a slow night. He must be now, sick. Now, the piano guys would let us oh, come yeah, up. The piano, they would be like, guys, get off. The piano guys are always with the, with, the, with the watch. Come on, motherfucker. Get off stage. Shut up, nigga. All right, move, motherfucker. Get away from me, cracker. Move. I hate your ass. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mo. If you think any more journey songs with a piano, I'm going to pee on your piano. <laughs> Fuck you. I hate you. Yeah, they don't wind no. it down. They go rowdy into the yeah, comedy. Yeah, they, do, yeah, they go real Sing alongs and then go, yeah. sit down, shut yeah, up. Sit down, shut up. And now it's like, comic, deal with it, bitch. And I'm like, bitch, huh, watch this, you motherfucker. 19 double shots. Tequila. <laughs> In my that's a day, lot. That was a lot. It was a lot of tequila. That's a lot, no matter younger or older day, I, whatever. I, that's, that's several things I'm legendary about. One of them is my drinking. Uh, cause <laughs> I will drink. I will drink all day. People want to play with me and stuff. I will drink. I'll drink. I have drank an entire bottle of tequila and walked off stage. That was that night, in fact. I, I was I, that was an increment. It was like, hey man, you did a bottle and a half of tequila. Are you okay? Yep. Where my money? <laughs> <laughs> Can you drive? Nope, not yet. But I'm gonna walk. Well, I gotta tell. Time. I gotta tell everybody. Listen, you. You're sipping on unchilled, with no salt, no lime tequila. Yeah, what do you think I am, a tourist? Like <laughs> I drink like a Mexican, over the border and wet. I can't even begin to try to do that and record. <laughs> Come on, man. I do mine before. You're just sipping on it like it's water. Yeah, it is water. It's You're clear. such an adult. I am an adult, thank you. You are such an adult. Hey, stop. I think my burger's on right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we got a lot. Hold on, hold on. What's the name again? I'm sorry, I forget. Corey Mack. Corey we got Mack. Corey Mack Corey from Mack. New Orleans in here. Corey Mack, you're drinking something. He's like, these Negroes are stupid. What the fuck is wrong here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally sit like this, but I don't know. <laughs> you never seen Curry Mac, he looked like a tiny W. Kamau Bell. That's what he looks like. A tiny W. Kamau Bell. He if he had gastric bypass. He gave his gang leg and, like, and cut off three feet of his leg. That's what he is. I ain't trying to don't, 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 don't fuck with you, Curry. <laughs> I got my friend Liz Brody here, the darkest little female comic I've ever met, and that I know some dark. She looks people. very innocent. She looks like a little innocent, snow white girly. She 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 looks perfect, and then she says, then her mouth opens up, and horrible shit comes out. <laughs> and I'm just like, the first time I saw her, I almost came not sexually, but I'm just like, was she is dark as fuck. She belongs to me. Keep away from her, you bastard redneck. She belongs to me. She's my comic. Over here also we got Shandra Massey, my number two, my second in command. Uh, yeah, she does all the shit I want to do. That's, all, that's what's happening here at the podcast. We all done. And Ernie, Ernie's over here. Ernie looks Ernie like. And, and Ernie, Ernie Kenimer. Kenimer. Right. Ernie Kenimer. All right. We got he looks one. like a Mr. Kenimer, doesn't he? Dude, he looks like he's straight from Mayberry. This <laughs> motherfucker is straight from Mayberry. He stopped, he stopped saying nigga yesterday. That's when he first stopped saying nigga. He stopped saying nigga. Uh, okay, three days ago. Three days. Three days. <laughs> This podcast is He gonna... said three days ago <laughs> with a straight face. I know, because he's serious. Here's the three. <laughs> he's a, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm Guys, trying I've to, learned. I'm trying to win it out. I'm evolving. I'm just, I'm just calling people Negro now. I'm getting to, I'll be in black in 2018, which that was last year. You are in Birmingham. <laughs> easy, easy. You're. Uh, <laughs> that's that easy. <laughs> Dude, I did a gig. I did. I did I'm, I'm, if you, I'm gonna tell you right now. This is my announcement. I'm no longer doing benefit gigs for anyone. No more benefit gigs. I got one more benefit gig coming for a friend of mine, John okay. Davis. John Davis. You know, Big John. Yeah. Okay. Do a benefit here. No more. Because every time I do a benefit, the show is some bullshit. Okay. They put some people who. I did a benefit show for St. Jude in a small town called Batesville, Arkansas, Friday night. I heard the word, I heard the word Negro at least seven times just in conversation <laughs> with people that I was not involved with. Okay, <laughs> they said Negro. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, somebody had a, somebody decided to have a birthday celebration during this middle act. It was a gal was on stage, on stage telling. They're just them, doing the and somebody just happy birthday to you singing like, singing singing happy birthday brought out a cake he's like well this is wonderful and i'm just like i gotta get out of here shout out to all my listeners in Batesville. i'm huge <laughs> what i've, up, seen, the numbers. What I've up? seen the numbers i'm huge <laughs> are you heavy in Batesville? hey what's up <laughs> was it the duck blind or the blind duck what's up y'all how y'all doing you know the duck blind what was it the, the duck, duck blind? blind i should have known but that was a venue that's a venue dog the duck one. I walked in there and said, you know why I love playing in places like Bayfield? Because I can see all your kind of camouflage at the same time. <laughs> Just look like a bunch of bushes hanging out. All of them had on camouflage. Girl had on a camouflage thong. No, I didn't like mention it. We had Viking, Viking helmet. What's happening? A, vac a vacuum. That's ass going to be one. That's some kind of Shriners thing, Man, that, I think. That's some racist <laughs> shit right there. That's that's like a son of the Anarchy episode they ain't filmed yet. <laughs> All right, my, first of all, this, this we escalated in nine minutes. I can I'm tell sorry, you that. I'm that was fat. No, why? I'm, That's why I had you on. I, <laughs> We've got to tell the story because yeah. it's legendary, uh, uh, especially among comics, yeah. about your your let's call it a scene at the Viper Room way back in the day. Oh, okay. All right, so. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. LA, the Viper Room, so. world famous Viper world Room, world famous Viper Room in LA. So this was about two thousand. Um, yeah, so what happened was, I'm an asshole, and, <laughs> and we had left a bunch of other bars in L.A. This is like my third time in L.A., right? So we were out there having a bunch of fun with a friend of mine, Jeremy, who was with me, showing me the ropes in uh, L.A., and uh, we had just left this club called 7969, which every night of the week was a different club, you know what I mean? One night it was a bondage club, the next night it was a drag queen club, the next <laughs> night it was a transgender club. Okay. And we went to transgender club accidentally and I lost my mind because <laughs> there was a chick that looked like J-Lo with a penis and I'm like, I gotta leave. I like this, place this place is nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and Corey rolled his eyes on that. Corey back for the win on the corner. <laughs> Uh, All right, so, so you've left. So we left the seven nine six nine club, <laughs> and we go to the Viper Room because I wanted to hang. I'd never been to the Viper Room, and I gotta understand. We've been to three clubs already. I have done two sets that night. 
So this is after all that stuff. We're at, this is my last stop for the evening. Uh, at least I, that's what it ended up being. I've never been to the Viper Room, and I'm there, and I'm probably maybe 14 shots in. Okay. No joke. I'm so at that know. time, was that a PR? Was that uh -huh. a personal record at that time? Not at that time. No, 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 no. Since no, 19, no. we heard it's a record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 19 is the record. So I'm at 14 that night. But um, my friend is tipping hugely, so the shots aren't like what we got here tonight. Right. They are half the thing, so I am gone. Okay. And I take another shot, and this band comes on and starts playing, and they're dressed like evangel evangelical people, and they're singing country songs. It's fucking hilarious. What? Yeah, I'll tell you about that in a second, because <laughs> that story gets weird in a minute, okay? Okay. All right. So I am drunk, and then I remember, holy shit, I'm in the Viper Room. This is where River Phoenix died. Right. <laughs> holy shit. So I'm like, me and my friend Jeremy started laughing about this. Like, I wonder where it happened. I need to know where he, and I go up to the security guard, got about my size, same code, could have been me in the mirror, but it wasn't. And I said, hey man, you're security, right? Yeah. <laughs> could have been me in the mirror, but it wasn't. <laughs> so I'm looking at him like, hey man, you're security, how long have you been working? I'm about 15 years. Look, let me ask you some shit. Were you here the night uh, River Phoenix dropped in? Man, we, we don't talk about that here. Uh -huh. now, look, I understand it was fucked up, I need to know. <laughs> I ain't trying to start no shit. I'm just like, where, where, where did it happen? And he was like, man, we really can't talk about that. Look, I ain't trying to start a fight. And then I just thought I walked back away from him because I don't want to think I'm about to do some shit, right. right? So I'm like getting on my knees like, look, I ain't trying to start nothing, but let me just tell you, <laughs> did he fall here? And I like lay down with one leg stretched out, the other leg in my side. Right. I'm on my back like, is it, was it like this? And he's like, what the fuck? And I turn over and do another pose. My ass is up this time. I'm like, how about this? Did he die like this? Tell me this is bunch right here. And this goes on for like two or three more times before they literally pick me up and carry me out that bit. I mean, I'm Mo, literally, I'm what? serious. No, no, no. I'm a big dude. I wasn't that big. I was about then. to say, you're a, I want everybody listening that's never seen you. You're a large man. I'm, I'm 6'3", and I don't know how much I lost weight on keto, but I'll <laughs> just say over 300. Say over 300 pounds. Back then, I was about 350. All uh, right. Maybe 320. I don't know. I was sexy. All right. All right. And, uh... <laughs> And literally, this man is trying not... This, the fucked up part is he's trying not to laugh at the same time that he's calling other security to help him get rid of me. <laughs> he's, cause, he's over there like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You gotta be committed to getting the ground at our I size. I got on the ground. I don't give a fuck, man. I've been banned from so many places. I got banned from Grace. That's another podcast. Uh, That's this podcast. <laughs> we need another one. We got plenty of time. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, okay. So, I am seriously on the ground, and I'm trying not to laugh. My friend Jeremy has seriously moved into the corner of the outdoors like, I don't want to know. And you're just laying thing. like a dead person. And I am laying. Well, I'm not laying like a dead person, but I'm on the ground, and I keep moving trying to get a position, right? <laughs> And he was, they seriously, he was like, this nigga, still, he's something wrong with him. Call the police. And I'm like, uh-uh. But they grabbed, it was like full security, all grabbed part of my body and picked me up and took my ass outside. And I'm still just asking him a question the whole time. Look, I ain't trying to stop, but did Joaquin come in here afterwards? What happened? Where did Joaquin, and I'm just, he literally kicked me out, right? So here's the other story. I'm telling you, okay, this is the story. This is the other part of the story that, most, that I didn't find out. You don't even know this part of the story. No. I didn't find this part out till later on. Uh, one of my favorite bands is Tool. Okay, I'm a Tool yes. fan, and he made has a bunch of other little bands, Pusses for a Perfect Circle, all yes. that shit. So there's a band on stage, and they were playing. They were dressed as country. This one guy had on like a Colonel Sanders suit and his fucking eight inch pompadour wig, and they're singing country songs, but not like country songs. They're fucking, like the words aren't country. The words are country. They're doing they're oh doing, the country lyrics. They're doing punk rock covers of country songs. It's okay. hilarious. It's hilarious. I was watching for a few minutes before he kicked me out. I'm like, okay, that, that's cool. <laughs> but here's the thing. That was the band Pussifer before they were named Pussifer. Really? Before they had actually written songs. That was Mayor James Keenan in his country-ass fucking wig in this costume. And they were calling themselves back in the day before they became Pussifer. They were called Recreational Racism. <laughs> that's what that band was. Recreational Racism. And it's fuck, dude. It was it looked like it looked straight from the country. It, it, it looked straight from the Grand Ole Opry. But they're doing, <laughs> they're doing. They, if you've ever heard any Pussifer songs, they have one song called uh, "Country Boner," and they were yes, that one. Yeah. And like I fucked Dolly Parton and I fucked her demon side. It's all like that. <laughs> and I'm I didn't know shit. He blown his mind. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Kenmer's in the corner. He is blown. <laughs> <laughs> I know Dred Zeppelin, I know Dred Zeppelin, I know Elvis, I know them all, I've seen them all.
so that would have that would have been a neat show to be at if you yeah, wouldn't have got kicked. If I had to get kicked out, because that was that was like their second or third performance. By the way, I think you're the only person I've known to get kicked out for laying on the ground. <laughs> not, not fighting, drinking, being an asshole. Oh, that was, that was <laughs> asshole and drinking with that. Well, I know that, but I mean. You were laying on the ground, technically. Yeah, I was not a threat. That's you're, what I'm trying to say. You were kicked was, out for doing impressions. Yes, I was. <laughs> as most comedians who do impressions should be. I'm such a dude. I'm such a douche. I don't care. I'm having fun. Wait, so how do you get how do you get kicked out of Graceland? Okay, once again, I'm an asshole. And this one, this one was before I ever started comedy. Okay. Okay, I was not a comic at the time. I was just a weirdo who worked at FedEx. <laughs> Just an asshole. Uh, actually, I was much nicer then. Not a professional asshole. Not a asshole. professional asshole, no. Right. So, uh, I had some friends come in town, and they really wanted me to take them to Graceland. I'm like, I don't want to go to Graceland. I've never been to Graceland. I don't give a fuck about Elvis. But you're my friend. <laughs> that was sacrilege, I, man. I don't. I don't. For people I in don't, Memphis, I, everybody's like, no, you not, love no, them. No, That's what I'm saying. No, they assume y'all love everything. Nobody in Memphis loves Elvis. Nobody. You say somebody in Memphis who the king of the You love probably, Jerry Lawler? They're going to say, not his barbecue. He can fuck himself on that. <laughs> He was, I was sl I was power driving his head again. Called me the black Andy Coffin motherfucker. Go ahead, you start a barbecue restaurant. Take your ass somewhere else. <laughs> so it's not good. <laughs> I have a show that's coming out on YouTube very shortly called <laughs> Mo Alexander's Barbecue Beatdown. Okay. Where the first season, all we do is put barbecue versus barbecue, uh, Memphis barbecue versus Memphis barbecue. Ooh. I'm sick of people telling me where to go, and I never trust anybody you don't know with barbecue because you they they could have burnt out their taste buds by doing meth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust these motherfuckers, right? So I'm over here. I mean, we got, we, yes, we're going to do his. We haven't done his yet because I just don't want to go over there and say, I would like some ribs, sir. I don't want to say that. Have you have you been there? I passed by it. And you couldn't, see, one of the biggest things about barbecue, uh -huh. if you pass by it and you can't smell it from the road, you really shouldn't oh, then, stop. Oh, yeah. Where are y'all cooking it then? Well, yeah, where the fuck you cooking it? Right. See, you say that about no, me? My That's true. <laughs> Dude, that's for real, too, man. It's the same thing about weed, Corey Max said. I'm not kidding. I'm not even kidding. For real. That's for real. That's yeah, for real. my, my, my co-host, he's like, I drive by a barbecue place, Jimbo. He'll drive by and he goes, I, there's no smoke coming out of that building. I'm out. Because that means it came from somewhere. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. You can't smell it from the street. No, don't that's eat that. That's the smell. That's the smoke. That's why you go to the barbecue. You're like, what's that smell? Let me follow that to my place. <laughs> yes. Who's got the best barbecue? Stop taking those from people like that on my side. Corey Mack said, don't, yeah, don't take barbecue chips from people on his side. If your, if your barbecue reviewer weighs 158 pounds, he ain't ate enough. <laughs> <laughs> No food crazy <laughs> sitting on his lap. You don't even know. Y'all don't even see what's happening right now. No food critic should have their weight start with a one. <laughs> hold on, hold on. What's happening? What's up? What's up? Y'all don't know shit about barbecue. That's the, that's the, that's the thing in the sun right there. Y'all don't know shit about barbecue. Hold on, hold on. Can we pause that for a second? Hold on. All right, back to the Graceland story. Check this out. So. The year is 1991. I'm 21. I'm legal. I'm stupid. Uh, friends wanted me to take them to Graceland. They want to go to Graceland. I don't, like most men, I don't give a fuck about Graceland. Um, and I, I, I had never been, but okay, I went. I told them, fine, we'll go to Graceland. They broke you down. They broke me down. They're friends of mine. One I used to see naked a lot, so it was all good. <laughs> um, so we go in, and back in the day, I think that back in the day, they used to actually have tour guides. They had okay. tour guides in the thing. So they'd tell you what's happening over there, what's happening, what was this. So, tell you okay. the history of everything. So I'm in a group of people, the only three people under the age of death. Because um, I'm like 21, I got like a 25 and a 30 year old, they want to go great. So everybody else is 113. Okay. They're old as fuck. <laughs> Most of them are old blue. It was like, it was like a, oh, I know, here's the best description of it. It's like a cosplay episode of the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 50 people. It was like a group convention of people Strong. doing cosplay of the Golden Girls, right? So we're going through this and we're wa and we're walking through it and they're telling us everything and all this, this is this and this is this and this and the conversations are going on for like ten minutes every time, right? It's like ten minutes at each little icon. And people are literally breaking down crying. Literally breaking down crying in the middle of a Elvis tour. Okay. 
Like they're reliving it. Yes, they're like, yeah, I loved Elvis. He was my Jesus. Uh, he, he he died for your cocaine. All right. Um, so so I'm in here trying to be nice. Okay, I'm trying, but my friends are like, oh, this is interesting. Fuck you. I'm in here. I'm just doing the whole thing, trying not to nothing make got you. Oh oh, lots no. of stuff got me. Lots of stuff got me, dude. Lots of stuff got me, okay? <laughs> but the where I couldn't hold it in anymore because I was snickering through the whole thing, just trying not to do it right. loud because it's fucking hard. If you've never been to Graceland, watch. You know, are you snickering at the tour or yes. are you snickering at the people? No, both. Okay. The, You're not excited about this jumpsuit. I am not excited about anything. <laughs> this is hard. Elvis, for those of you who've never been to Graceland, let me give you let me save you $87. <laughs> Elvis is, if you take Dolomite from 1972 and put a car bomb in the car he had and take that car bomb, blow it up, and it hits every wall of a house, that is Graceland, okay? It's like a 1972 pimp car exploded. Black pimp from Mississippi. From Mississippi pimp, 72 Cadillac Eldorado full size. Blew up everywhere. Blew up everywhere. So we get to the jungle room, and that's where it happened, right there. The jungle room. If you if you don't know anything about the jungle room, this is what I'm talking about, pimpalistic right here. Okay, the jungle room has the same piece of leopard print furniture from the ceiling to the walls to the floor. It's one big motherfucking piece of leopard. <laughs> it's a giant leopard. It's a giant leopard, and they are talking about this seriously. And people are like seriously crying out the door, and I lost my shit. Okay. <laughs> I lost my shit. Before I was ever a stand-up comic, I was just an asshole and weird, right? Okay. I made up some shit on the spot. I did my version of George of the Jungle as Elvis would have sang it, okay? So I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm over there. George, George, George of the Jungle. George, he can be, oh! And doing karate kicks and the whole thing. Somebody yelled, he's blaspheming Jesus. That's an actual quote. That wasn't a quote. That's an actual <laughs> quote. He's blaspheming Jesus. That's an actual quote. I'm doing the whole thing. These women have turned even whiter than they actually are. My <laughs> friends, my friends are about to piss themselves. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm doing the whole thing, karate kicks and all. <laughs> and I'm doing this, and security comes and gets me right then. Because they are crying. It's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> it is old white women from you all You ruined their the tour. Yes, I did. Yes, I fucking did. I ruined their tour and made lifelong friends out of my friends. I still talk to people today like, did you remember that time? Yes, I do. I talk about it all the time. That I, explains that year you sold the shirt that said, fuck Priscilla. Yes! <laughs> Here's the best part about this story. Okay. I'm literally banned because this happened in 1991. Okay. In 2003, some other friends wanted me to go to Graceland. I told them I don't think I'm allowed on the property anymore. <laughs> they thought I was kidding. We get up to the, you have to walk in the main gate to go there. You park across the street, you walk across the street, you go in the main gate. Some little dude on a golf cart came up and said, sir, you're not allowed to be on the property. And I had to literally leave the property laughing my ass off <laughs> because that means somewhere on the security guard ground, there's a picture of me being it's carried you. out of Graceland. Yes, sir. They've been waiting on you they to come back. They have been waiting on me. That's 13 years later, I come back and they're like, no. I feel like that list is short. <laughs> Don't you? Of people that are perma banned? There's a story about. There's got to be a short list. There's a story about another comic. I never, I've never asked him this story. Is true or not? There's a comic named Charles Vericola. Okay. You know who that is? I've Charles, heard the name. From out of Charlotte. Don't know him personally. Good dude. Good dude. There's a story that he made it all the way to the grave site. I did not make it to the grave site. Okay. The grave site was like two more things down. I didn't make it. <laughs> I, I have told this by several people. I need to ask him if this is true. But I have told he had made it to the grave site and broke down in the grave site of Elvis Presley because they know he buried him in the backyard. And uh, he has fucked up part. He apparently, this is the story that I have. I don't know if this is true. But he went to his pocket because he always used to wear a trench coat before the, you know. Oh, God. Yeah. Before used, they were bad. Before the trench coats were bad. Went to his pocket, got a large McDonald's fries from his pocket, and tried to set it on the grave, and that's when he got tackled. I don't know if that's true. I've heard that story for years, <laughs> though. That's innocent. I, no. Oh, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's people, littering. That's littering. That's He's perma-banned for littering. <laughs> you know and it's a waste of damn fries. I, can't. <laughs> I know it was a waste of fries, but he literally did that. <laughs> 
Oh. I got in trouble oh. at the, in the, when I was 10, I got in trouble in the jungle room and at the gravesite. Oh my god! So I was a huge Elvis fan as a kid. Oh my Probably god. because of Lilo and Stitch. Oh. I'm not sure if that... <laughs> I was a troubled child that maybe spoke to me. Oh, I don't. Jesus. Okay. Um. <laughs> so <laughs> when <laughs> Wait, now everybody's firm of band. Apparently, this is a long way. Hold on. He did it when it wasn't even a tour place. It was just a house. <laughs> he gave him the pills that he was eating <laughs> on the shitter. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so my father had to do some trip or something in Tennessee and it was like I want to go I want to go to Graceland okay so we went we would go to Graceland I am learning things about Elvis I did not need to know at 10 right as we're going through it's an audio tour and I'm coming to my own conclusions mm -hmm. I'm like this is no this is wrong what is this man doing we get into the jungle room I take the little audio thing off and that's where there was an actual person like saying things yeah. and they were like does anyone have questions and I was the 10 with my father god bless that man um, <laughs> And I raised my hand, and I was like, was Elvis on drugs? And they were like, ah! what? Out of the mouth like, of babes. I was like, because this is really tacky. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tacky. It's horrible. It's horrible. Nothing's tacky about Grace. Man. Everything is tacky about Grace. My father, just, my father just, like, buries his head in his hands. And we get out to the grave site, and there's another, because there were just kind of, like, people planted throughout answering questions about certain right. rooms. So we get out to the grave site. And again, I had a question. <laughs> and I was like, why is there a cross here? And they were like, what? I was like, there's a cross on the grave. And they were like, yeah, because he was a Christian. And I was like, no, he was a Jew. And they were like, <laughs> she's going hard at 10. <laughs> she's going like, ham. Let me just tell you, this is why I love this little chick right she's here. She's going ham. Liz, bro, I'm going to tell you right now, you the podcast. I'm going like, uh, it's really white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, Liz Brody, one of the funniest people you've never heard of right now. She is dark, twisted, and fucking weird. Are you weird. on Twitter? Uh, so I have a fake Lord of the Rings account on Twitter and not a real one. <laughs> it's, it's called the Sword Aurelian where I rewrite Lord of the Rings. Oh my tweets. god, I gotta go. I, How's the handle? Um, it's at the Sword Aurelian. Um, the Sword Aurelian. The Sorta. Like, sorta. Yeah, Sorta. S-O-R-T-A, really? Yeah. Um, and the one time I tried to tweet no fielding that he stole my haircut, I didn't realize that my little icon was uh, Mary from Lord of the Rings, oh and my, my whole account was like, "I'll show you the meaning of hey," said Gandalf to. <laughs> That's some nerd fireback. Right that there. is. That is. That is. <laughs> I res I respect her nerdum. We I will roll I will roll a twenty seven sided dice with her anytime. I'm telling you right now. All right. <laughs> you think of a good out story. I'm yeah, letting you in on any story you want, but first, I ask all my guests the same two questions. So yes, I gotta sir. ask you. Ask me the question, brother. First one, you're stuck on a deserted island. You got three albums to choose from. What do you got? Mm. What are you taking with you? Three albums. Three albums. 1999 by Prince. Okay. Um, Anima by Tool. Okay. We got some variety going. I like it. And probably Run DMC, The King of Rock. Ooh, nice. Yeah. You got a good variety there. Yeah, I'm, I'm a weird person. I was an old punk rock. <laughs> I was an old, I'm an old punk rock kid, man. I, I went to the set, Memphis, Tennessee, where I came up, had the second oldest punk club in America, right behind CBGB. Really? Yeah, right behind CBGB in New York. It was called the Antenna Club, and everybody played there. Everybody. Who, who was the, uh, this might have been a couple years ago now, you played and in, in, uh, like a punk band was watching you, and you became friends with them. Negro Terror. It was Negro Terror. Negro Terror. They're a very good friend. Where were you? Where'd you play? Him no, we weren't playing together. Oh, okay. I saw them. I saw the name. You just watched them. I saw the name Negro Terror, and I'm like, I am going to this show. <laughs> I, I, and I told them. I told them to their faces before the show. Like, hey, because me and the, me and the lead singer Omar had been in the same community for years. Yeah, circling around each other. I it's knew, one of those persons everybody assumed you knew. Yes, we yeah. all, we knew of each other right. and got mistaken for each other all the time because he's a fat black dude too. <laughs> and people used to say, "Hey, are you Omar?" No, he's like people used to ask me if I'm Omar. I'm like, "Fuck, you're Mo. You're Omar. Fuck." And we immediately became friends. And the first time I saw him, I told him, "Look, I don't even give a fuck if y'all suck. I just need a Negro Terror shirt. That's all I need. <laughs> I just need some merch. I need. That's all I need. I will wear this on stage nationwide." <laughs> And I do. I take. I, I don't have it on tonight, but normally I wear my Negro Terror shirt. Um, uh, Negro Terror, a black punk rock band out of Memphis, <laughs> Tennessee. Um, 
My friend Omar, the lead singer, unfortunately died this year. Which is, Did he? Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, it was, oh, man. A, there's a documentary on the band called uh, Negro Terrors on Amazon.com. Really? Right now. Yes. Go watch it. I can't oh, wait to watch it. Watch it. And if you, there's one scene where he's wearing a Mo Alexander shirt. Is he really? For real. For real. Yes. For real. For That's real. awesome. <clears throat> for real. That's blue for real. Real. Because I was like, I brought like, I'm like, you wearing mine? I'm wearing yours. Let's go. That's killer, man. Um, so they're trying to fix the, fix some problems right now. You know, they got to get another singer, but they're gonna continue. That on. documentary's out now. That though. documentary's out right on now. On Amazon called Negro Terror. It's on Negro Terror. Amazon.com. I can't wait. They to watch re-edited it. It and put his funeral at the beginning. And yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. It, so it was I, already in the works. No, it was already done. It had yeah. it had won it had won several awards in like little um, um film, little, festivals film festivals stuff. across America and stuff. Wow. And actually went to, I think they went to Europe with it too. But they, yeah, they won a thing. But then he he had, something happened. He died, and they put the funeral at the beginning of the thing, edited in there. That's wow. Like, God damn man. And well, check that out. Negro, Negro Terror, Terror on Terror. Amazon. Everybody watch it. Hey, if you like me, you'll love these guys. Follow them on Facebook and Twitter and all that shit. Cause, yeah, uh, wish them the best. Hope they get that back on track. Yeah, man. Well, the album is done. The album is finished. You just got to. With him on vocals? With, with, with him on His vocals. last one? His last one. There's one on Bandcamp, too, also, that you can get a, the, their, their bootleg, they call it. Uh, but it's on Bandcamp, which is the first Negro nice. Terror album. Uh, it's, it's an EP, so it's got like five or six songs. They do a great song called. They do a cover. They took a. They they get in so much trouble. On, they, you think I get in trouble? They get in trouble. <laughs> you get in trouble. They get in somebody. Trouble. You're about to go headline the start on Birmingham. I can guarantee this. Somebody's gonna walk out. I don't doubt that. I don't and doubt I, by that. By the way, I already saw him in the lobby. I, I wanted to pre warn him. <laughs> I wanted to go. Y'all might want to close your tab. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all ain't gonna. Who, who are they? Who are they, sir? They Tim? look like Mr. Kenham. <laughs> They look like your opener oh from Mayberry. Oh, yeah, no. you know, they don't know what they're They don't doing. know you look like me. I, how about this? I'm stereotyping. They might smash it. They might go out there and be all open for it. They might be huge Mo fans. Otis. He, Elmer looks like Otis. <laughs> he does. He looks just like Elmer. He looks just, just like that drunk. He looks just like the drunk from Mayberry, dude. He really does. They get that hat. The he does. Hat. He got that hat on everything. I hope. I mean. <laughs> all right, the next question all I right, ask. Next question you ask. What's on the Mount Rushmore? Of Little Debbie's. I don't eat Little, little <gasps> Debbie's. Do you not? I don't. I don't like it. I, I've never you liked it. You don't like sweets or Little Debbie's? Little Debbie's. Because every time I saw Little Debbie's, somebody tried to give me one of those fucking oatmeal cookies of theirs. I'm like, fuck <laughs> y'all, man. This is bullshit. I don't like oatmeal. Don't well, like... You, you don't like any of the other ones? No. Naughty Buddy. No. Swiss cake roll. Fuck a Swiss cake roll. <laughs> what do you mean? A Why? Swiss cake roll looked like a miniature fucking fleshlight. Fuck that thing. I'm like... <laughs> 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 I can't, I can't with you right now. <laughs> they do. That's exactly zebras, right. that, huh? Zebra cakes, Christmas tree no, cakes. I hate all that shit, man. I brought you a pack of pumpkin spice rolls. I will kill your family with that bullshit. <laughs> do you think I literally they, eat anything that's pumpkin spice? I, I, I don't even eat pumpkin spice pussy. I don't eat pumpkin spice <laughs> pussy. You can put pumpkin spice on it. I'll eat the pussy. I'll dust the pumpkin spice Wait, off. This is gonna be a game changer moment. You try it. What if you like it? I had to kill myself. <laughs> I had to kill myself. We're gonna get a picture of you with the pumpkin spice roll. Give my gun. <laughs> you are not a sweets guy. I am a sweets guy. You're just not a snack thought, cake guy. I always thought those snack cakes were trash. Little Debbie's were trash, man. Oh my god. I'm a hostess dude. The hostess cupcake, the little chocolate chip cupcake. Well, yeah, those are standard. Those are. The, Exactly. Who's this little Debbie bitch? And why is she making me? She's cookies? fine. She loves no, she's me. Not. She's I little, love her. Little Debbie is young. Um, the chick from the old, old Grand Ole Opry. Grand Ole Opry. What's her name? <laughs> Minnie Pearl. Minnie, Pearl. Minnie, Minnie Pearl is an old version of Little Debbie. That's all it is. Little Debbie. Minnie Pearl. Same bitch. I'm telling you right now, dog. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you just smashed Little Debbie. I did not expect sorry, that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not a little Debbie dude, man. I, I always. Did. I used, the first time I had a little Debbie, I can remember because it was traumatized because I've been to this thing and I'm like, what the fuck did you give me? And it was before I could even say fuck. I'm like, that I just was knew a what, what fuck oatmeal was. pie? Yes, yeah, that oatmeal pie thing. But you just didn't like oatmeal pie. You it gotta venture out by the rest. No, fuck all that stuff. The cake, the, okay, the one. The one that doesn't really suck is the Christmas tree. It doesn't suck. The Christmas tree. It doesn't suck, but it's not good. I've never said, you know what I want? A Christmas tree. I've never said, I want to eat a Christmas tree. I've never. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's a Jewish person joke. The Jewish girl said, yeah, I've never said I want a Christian. You got to understand, Liz Brody is one of my favorite comics. She needs to be, I want her to quit her day job and go full time. I saw her in a fucking brewery in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I was the only black person for seven miles, okay? And she did, <laughs> and she, can I, can I say it on here again? I, I don't know if she still does this bit. I never want to ruin it. You, you won't see it coming. But she did a bit so fucked up that at some point during this bit, she had 37 white people all chanting death to America. <laughs> Alabama white people. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. She white. looks like a Wednesday Adams. No, she's she very. No, she don't. No, she. Yes, looks, she she's looks, got the. She's okay. got the dark hair. That's just no, me. I'm sorry. <laughs> she I'm said sorry. She's more dead. You look. This is this is who you are. You, huh? No, no. You are the cartoon version of Lydia from Beetlejuice. Not the, oh, not the live option. Call. Not the live action version. You're the cartoon version. That's a good call. Yes. That. That's you. Cartoon <laughs> one owner is who she is. Yes, yes that's exactly. <laughs> I completely get that. I can, and, I can see that. And she's fucking adorable and she's lovable and then she well, says this horrible shit. And I'm it's just like, Thanksgiving and she it's almost Thanksgiving. She has bats on her skirt. I have no problem with that. I no, that's what I'm saying. I I, for the listeners, I want them to get a oh, feel yeah. of yes. who, we're, who we're with here. She has, yes, bats are universal. Bats with a spider web. I, I have Christmas bats. Everybody's in the Thanksgiving <laughs> season. She's got bats and spider webs. That's to America. That's you know? <laughs> oh, God damn. <laughs> Is that your first t-shirt? <laughs> it better be your first t-shirt. I swear to God, I'll wear that around because I want you to name Why are you wearing that, sir? Uh, it's not my shirt. I, just, uh, I agree with her comedy. Uh, <laughs> I agree with her comedy. God damn, I swear Mo, to God. Yeah. What we got? We're um, about to go on stage, dude. The show's on, already started. I know. We got as me, some guy that looks like Otis from the Mayberry, and a small <laughs> version of Kamal W. Bell all doing this show. Now, it's going to be a weird ass show. I, I don't know none of these people. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm happy. <laughs> No, no, no. We're know. missing Otis on I'm stage. Mean, yeah, He's probably killing right now. Probably, I haven't know. heard that much laughter. He, well, that's he <laughs> might about to get killed. I saw that crowd when they walked in here. Those country folks you talking they about? Might that's, have, that's, the, that's, the couple I saw might have rode with them. That's what I'm saying. That's, what I'm saying. that's his cousin. So. They came from Mountain Brook. That's <laughs> the uppity part of town. <laughs> Mo, tell them where they can find you, man. You can find me everywhere. If you type in M O Alexander, you'll find my website, which is MoAlexander.net. If you're on Instagram, it's Mo Alexander. Facebook f fan page is comedian Mo Alexander. Because I'm at 5,000 friends. Stop trying to friend me. You're going to live in lim limbo. Do you have the, Go to the fan page. Do you have the 1,000 friend request built I up? I do. Too? There's like yeah. 1,800. That's what I got. They're yeah. a comic here in town tonight he's like friend me i'll be at your show tonight nigga i don't know you what the fuck you <laughs> Some guy that's what you told me when i asked you to be on the podcast <laughs> that was me i know you <laughs> your name is not comedian black ice I don't know who i'm like you sound like you some road construction shit black ice what are you telling me black ice. you're a danger to society <laughs> black ice <laughs> Mo, thank you, man. Thank Always you, a pleasure. Thank you, my man. Appreciate you. Follow him. Go see him when he's in your town. Uh, if you're one of the last few standing in the crowd afterwards, you're a winner. Hold on. Hold on. What? Also, also in January, the check out my. I got a show about barbecue. Mo Alexander's barbecue beatdown. Okay. January, January of 2020. 2020. We'll drop it then. It will drop on YouTube. 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 The, the YouTube channel right now is Mo Alexander's. What is so it? Then go ahead and subscribe barbecue, and get yeah, ready. Barbecue beatdown. Subscribe right now. Okay. And there's like one mini episode that we filmed in Wichita because it was had to do it. Oh, I like but, it. Yeah. Barbecue have you beatdown. have you did a have you did a uh, where you had to be a judge for a barbecue cook-off? Yes. Those the the real judges that have been certified yeah. are serious. Yeah, and they pissed me off. Yeah, I went in there goofing around and I got fucking told. No, I told them off. I'm like, no, don't come in and tell your kind of bullshit. You from North Carolina? Oh, you want to talk to your ass? <laughs> they told me I, I was like, fine. If we're gonna be serious, I put my sunglasses on. They're mm -hmm. like, no, you can't see the redness of the meat. <laughs> Take your sunglasses off. I was like, are we being that serious? Jesus, I just wanted free barbecue. Jesus needs to come back and slap that bitch with a rib. Yeah. We did a kosher barbecue competition, and uh, everyone was just, you know, the indigestion was too bad. We had to kill the competition. Kosher <laughs> barbecue. Kosher barbecue. Beef. Anyway. Sliced turkey. <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> All right, Bo Alexander, thank you. Thank you, brother. We had Corey Mack from New Orleans. He's gone. Find Corey Mack from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. I'm uh, Liz J. Brody. Find me on Instagram. Where's your favorite? Right. At uh, Jew Chef Liz. 
Jew Chef Liz. Jew Chef Liz. I like it. Mo Alexander, thanks everybody for Thank coming you. out. Thanks everybody for listening to another edition of Cassio's Cut. We usually end by saying we should stop before we embarrass ourselves. How are you doing? I think that was <laughs> way going. <laughs>